there he goes, Joao Oliveira of Mushmore.net, who I didn't ask him if he knew um, Adriel over there at Shimajito. Um, so we need to refresh this screen here. And another round of applause, because now look, who's here? The Mama Bear is in the building, everybody. Um, McGowan, how are you this morning? Good morning. Fantastic. Thank you. And uh, that was amazing, wasn't it? I think you were sat in the green room having a little bit of a listen to Joao there. That was absolutely beautiful. I had a few things to lead on from that, if that's okay, because his eyes lit up when you mentioned human composting. It is a thing. Uh, it's a real thing. It's really good for the environment. It's the most sustainable, eco-friendly death thing that you can do, and it doesn't take that long to process. And then you can use you in the garden, which is fantastic. Um, and it, yeah, and we could. It would be one way to get around Portugal's um, the, the things set in place in Portugal have things a certain way which prevent eco-friendly burials. Well, eco-friendly composting, human composting means that by human composting, you wouldn't, it you could do it and it wouldn't be against any of the laws or anything in Portugal. So it yeah. would be accepted in Portugal if they just allow it in. So yeah. that would be fantastic for all of us here. And it means we'd finally get eco-friendly funerals, which is like, yes. I think we're moving our way towards that, aren't we, with, with the right sort of encouragement. And again, inspiration and action, as we were just saying. Remember, says James, if most of us do at least a little, there will be a huge positive yeah, net impact. So no one... No one of us needs to do it all. And some people feel like they do, don't they? I spoke to Will Thompson yes. yesterday. He's one of those people. He's doing well, sends his love, and he'll be joining us from time to time. I want my dead body to be composted after all viable organs and tissues have been harvested. Uh, um, let me just say to everybody, uh, we do have Portuguese sayings. We have deep thoughts. We have Yogi Berra quote of the day. A cue this. We've got a juice of the day, and we've got dad jokes. And everything else that I've not yet managed to squeeze into this fantastic show so far. So that will not be omitted it will just be delayed for today and it looks like we might hit, be here way after 10 o'clock because we need to speak to em about death and dying this is a new feature have we got garvo to thank for the name the departure lounge it's uh gary austin gary austin sorry yeah i call him garvo yeah yeah oh, so okay. he came up with that didn't he so yeah that was it was uh amusing he came up with in share and care and i was like mm, okay hold on <laughs> it's carl <laughs> what do you think to this then <laughs> yeah well uh, i think it's a wonderful inspiring. yeah and uh, you've agreed thankfully to be with us once a month to cover this subject it's an honor yeah we're tackling tackling the taboo um i think uh, we, we, we when we last spoke we, we covered the need to talk about death and dying from every aspect you know the practicalities of yeah. being in a foreign country and what you need to do and there are some you know there are some serious things to get your head around aren't there and, and let's face mm -hmm. it a lot of people who are retiring here are moving towards that part of their lives where they perhaps could be thinking about these things, about wills, about making sure they've got the right kind of will. What we they don't want. have to be actively dying or retired to do that, you know. Um, I had a stroke and I was 37. We right. can be okay one moment and something can happen where we're not. <laughs> you know, uh, people can get seriously ill at any age, so there is no time that's too early to make plans and yes. having plans particularly a living will puts things into action just in case anything should happen at any age um and it honors your where you are in in that moment in your life you know at that current stage of your life and it can grow with you yes. it can evolve with you so living wills are just as important in fact probably more important than dying wills because dying wills you don't have to be present while they're all arguing over it you know <laughs> you've gone but but the while you're alive and and there's all sorts of politics and things involved you really want to have some form of control especially if you're at that state of of, of dying or being where you're not able to speak maybe you've lost your voice in something but the you know rest what? of you still there, maybe like locked in syndrome or something. Exactly. And there are some key themes resonating this morning because I think what you're talking about is a process, isn't it? That you know, mm -hmm. the only the only time to start anything is now, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And if we if we saw life as processes rather than as sort of judgments and rationalities. I mean, that you could say from an environmental perspective, that's why we're in the trouble we're in, is because we tend to 
think an idea you know have ideology about these things rather than be involved in the process of these things and i love what you're saying there because you're talking about starting the process of uh, managing your death managing what happens to your stuff um your possessions and how you even you want your ceremony to be that can be that that doesn't have to be something you write down put in an envelope as a big shock for everybody to have, you know, I want everybody to wear tartan and all my money's going to the Cat Protection League. It doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to come out of an envelope on the day you die, does it? You can have these conversations yeah. now. Yeah. And the more we talk about things now, the yeah. easier it is. And the, the grief is always hard. The grieving process really rips us into, it's like a tsunami. It can wipe us out for days, weeks, years. Yeah. And the harder, the grief process is the hard is likely to be dependent on how hard things were when we were alive. So while we're alive and there's friction, there's resistance to truth, which results in a harder coming to terms and acceptance of what is, whatever it is that happens. So if we end up very sick, we have our own grief of the sickness and losing what we had, but we also have our friends and families coming to terms with our new physical capabilities, mental capabilities, and all the things that come with taking care of other people. You know, as we have to give up our independence, they end up, you know, and we become codependent, not by choice. Yes. Uh, we're, we're kind of really all caught up. The more we talk about this now and gain some form of acceptance now, when these things happen, there'll be less resistance. There'll be more flow. It'll be like, OK, this is happening. How can we manage this? How can we keep quality of life? How can we do this in a well-balanced way? It's not just about doing, it's about being. So the more we are with nature and we see how nature flows with the seasons, the more we can apply that to our own lives, our own beingness. You know, as we be um, in, a, in ourselves in, in any moment, we can feel our truth and our truth will lead us where we need to go and tell us what we should be doing. So that's really important. We start to tune into our, our truth, our authentic self and honour that, you know, honour our body, honour ourselves on every level. That's and by super. doing that, we help everyone else. Yeah. OK, so that's so we open up the space to, and the, the context to have those open conversations. Did you say truth resistance there? Because, again, this is another mm. um resonant um thing feature here isn't it is, is this isn't True. just about death and dying is it this is all this you could also extend this to the conversation we've just had with Joao. is that if we're honest and truthful about what's going on um, as marvin gay once said addressing these things back in the 70s um we might in in the in the embracing and the honesty and authenticity and vulnerability of talking about things we might actually improve things but i think you 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 observed there that there can be I think you used the word friction so we don't start those conversations do we out of the fear of what why don't why why are we not having those conversations do you think well there's so many things <laughs> um, this is one of those wow firework yes. which direction should we go mm, hold on a minute so fear it's everything's fear based so we've got love and fear and it's finding balance between that that fear of death and what are our personal fears someone I spoke to you just last week wasn't it and I got a message like how do you talk so freely about this thing and I said well I've done the work and right. to be able to do this work you have to look at your own personal fears what what you know what happened in your life that made you look at death in a different way so it was like my, I have had friends taking their own lives through suicide I've tried to take my own life many many years ago I I've watched people get pushed into wanting to take their own life and then coming back from that I, I've watched people dealing with and dancing that that dance with death and serious illness and I, I was in the stroke club and stuff so my own personal dances with death when I nearly died after I walked Hadrian's wall in six days all these different things have brought different memories that have affected me in different ways and I've had to sit with that and I've had to say well how was it like for me when I 
was really dancing with death. How did I feel in that moment? What was the fears for me? What was, and 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 what were the fears for other people? And what um what has religion told me? Where are my limiting beliefs? So what did as I grew up as a Christian? What did Christianity tell me and condition me to tell me that death was wrong? Or there's so many different. The more as you know, I'm a non-denominational uh, reverend, and you look at so many different things. So Buddhists look at practice fearless death. Then you've got the um, christians who who have a whole different way of celebrating life and forgiving you for your sins and all that and then letting you go and they don't like suicide you know they really don't like that or assisted dying and things like that but it's all right for animals but not for humans but that's another tangent I could go <laughs> <off on. laughs> you know and and you have all these different belief systems where everything's as you're told it should be Yes. And um, one thing that we're not doing nowadays that often um, is we're not honouring our own true feelings and we fear death. Death is now a very medical procedure. When I did a course with Glasgow University on, on dying, um, it was amazing because we got to see how instead of it being something we have in the house so people you take care of you those who are on the way out and you love them and you celebrate them while they're there and then you keep the body in the house before they go to the church and then you send them off and you have a right good knees up you know and that's how it was back then people were used to seeing bodies nowadays yeah, people are so scared to see a, a, a body they're scared in case it's um, and death can be messy yeah. you know we don't always go to sleep and just not wake up which is quite a very clean death especially with all the things that in the hospitals people pump people doctors they they pump our bodies full of all sorts of stuff to preserve life keep us going longer than we should yeah. and then wonder why they make such a mess when we've been fighting that process and with that hung on to everything when we go it's a whole big you know we're vomiting our way out of this life mm. and that's you know ideally that's not nice. the best way to go <laughs> you know, no and apologies if you're having a late breakfast this morning but oh, um, sorry. This, this, yeah. no not at all not at all <laughs> i just you know, just thought i'd say that um but what we're doing here um and this is a, a phenomenon that has gathered ground around the world this is a, a, a kind of death cafe we're having here isn't it right now yeah where the where the subject is being approached and we're talking about it openly okay. and i think actually oh who's this good morning okay. He says, good morning, Carl. Good morning, Hello, people. Yeah. My name's Batty. <laughs> Was that Patty or Batty? Batty. <laughs> Batty as in bonkers? Yeah. Hey, yes, excellent. Excellent. All right. Okay. Um, we have, yeah. So, in the in the spirit of the death cafe, and we've got our own uh, word for it. Thank you, or our own term for it, the departure lounge, uh, which we think is a little bit more sophisticated. Thank you very much, Gary Austin, with yeah. that. Um, and in the spirit of it, people are opening up and sharing with us, which is fantastic. Thank you for doing that, everybody. Let's go to your comments now, uh, and that would be James. I want my body to be composted after all the viable org organs and tissues have been harvested. And uh, yes, we we, um, we 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 read that out before, but I think that is quite a, a useful um, contribution there, James. Not quite. It is a very useful contribution because it opens up the conversation on that front as well. Isn't sprinkling one's ashes a natural human recycling? Yes, it is. And a lot of people do that. But can you do it? Is that allowed here in Portugal, Em? This has got a few grey areas, as with most things in Portugal. So, right. yes, the most eco-friendly way of, of, of dealing with the body is now in Portugal, because of the rules, is to get cremated. But then it's where are you allowed to put them? Because certain areas in Portugal don't really allow you to scatter them in your own space. You're not allowed your own body and your own on land. Right. Everything has to be done within the cemeteries or in special gardens and things. But there are different areas. So if you speak to someone, maybe your funeral director, some people say you can take them home and, and scatter the ashes. Some don't say that. So it's one of those things where it's very um dependent on what they allow at the time depending on who you speak to yes. in your 
cam- camera camera yeah that's right camera, and, and, yeah. Yeah, and, and and often when you ask it, it, it kind of it, it sort of evokes a lot of other things that you weren't expecting uh, yeah I get I guess like but that's the thing again it's dealing with fear so anyone dealing with death yes those people that have done the work uh, are really cool and flow with it and those that aren't so the best funeral directors are the ones that do work on themselves as well and there's some Very amazing good. ones out there you know okay point taken point taken doing the work on yourself another very interesting area that i'm sure we'll return to in the departure lounge new monthly feature here with m mama bear mcgowan um so thank you for that uh, john that'll be of john and pam there on that particular id um, I mean, you know once you've done it though it's not like anyone's going to say you can't do that. You'll need to sweep that up now and put it back into the little pot there. Um, I, I, I am did... looking at something, Carl, at the moment to yeah. try and make a specific area to make this happen, to right. allow people to be able to come and plant a tree and put the ashes in. And, but and I'm, so... it's yeah. research. Well, this is great. So we'll 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 we'll, we'll keep in touch with you on that. Uh, my own my own story, and forgive me if I've said this too many times already. But my own story of this was with my dad's ashes, with my two eldest daughters. But we sprinkled his ashes in the water in Muddiford. Some people might know it. I think um, Andy, by Andy, who's tuned in, will know Muddiford. We put him in the water at Muddiford, um, and uh, there he went. The ashes were in the water. There was we were never going to get those back if a council official said, "Hey, you can't do that." And then a condom floated past um, as it, 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 in the mix of water and ashes. And uh, all of human life was there for a moment. And we thought, that's what he would have wanted. And then later on, when I told my mum about this, my mum said, you do know he couldn't swim, don't you? Which is all part of the levity that you can enjoy uh, when it comes to these sorts of things. Because it, eventually it does come, doesn't it, after the pain? Uh, comes the relief. Um, Stephen saying to um, James, assuming the harvesting is for transplant rather than animal looks. Yes. Although, you know, uh, waste not, want not. Uh, Gary Austin, whichever way you look at it, we all get recycled. Uh, yes, indeed. It's it's how we do these things, isn't it? Not not weather, I suppose. Um, nature wastes nothing. And I don't see why the human life force should be any different. Well said, Garvo. And thank you for the name of Departure Lounge, which we're using here, of course, uh, to a point. But there is the energy required for cremation and the residual exhaust gases. Um, it's the last exhaust gas you give off in life, then, I suppose. And the ashes become mostly devoid of any composting benefits. So better to go for the old school burial and compost. Still better than embalming and burying in a casket, for sure. Seems like James uh, knows a thing or two about this. Fantastic. Uh, don't tell fi- Findus that you want all your organs <laughs> recycled. <laughs> Peter, you've been great value this morning. Grief is an emotional trauma, like any other injury to the body. It mobilizes that part of the body for a while to protect it. Isn't that a lovely way of seeing it? It's an injury. Um, and just like if you if you bang your knee, your knee um, is it hurts and is out of action for a little while, perhaps your heart is as well, or metaphorically speaking. Yeah, uh, I was just trying to really process, because Gary Austin... Uh, has been known for going very deep Uh, i really like when he says things but it takes a moment to just sit with what he says because he has so many gifts in when he says some of these one word things or one-liners you're like wow and then you sit with it a while and then you go yeah wow that's That's a a few days later ah that's what he meant (laughs) okay the great garvo that's why we call him he's got so many levels to when he says things it really can strike you on a deep beautiful place (laughs) indeed agreed absolutely right Uh, shout out to you garvo we see you mate uh security control the unknown all fear triggers of course Mm -hmm. uh people don't thank you for that james Uh, people don't talk about death because it brings up emotions that we they don't know how to deal with so the conversation gets off uh, gets put off until it happens yes this is what we are like as human beings isn't it uh, and you know i don't think we should give ourselves a hard time for that it's a great observation Stephen. at which point we are already in trauma and then we're not in the best place arguably to deal with it learning to deal with our feelings emotions now not later is a first good step that's a good insight isn't it em? they say what what they say is that pain pushes until the feeling pulls so sometimes it needs something that painful to really you know this is why people with serious illness and stuff Uh, and who usually lose everything and find themselves in some spiritual context. And that's why it happens, because sometimes we're too scared to look at it until we've got no other option than to sit with that. I wasn't able to talk to my granddad or with my nana about death until 
he'd had um, his stroke and I'd had mine and we were sat there laughing at how we couldn't get peas. We was, you know, sitting at the dinner table like you do with your grandparents and his peas were flying off his plate, mine were flying off mine and my nana was like, Bruce, Emily, you know, what? look at this, look at this mess. Honestly. Yeah, and me and my granddad going, oh, this is all right, isn't it? And, and it really brought us about this, this understanding, this mutual connection, how... All of a sudden, we both knew what it was like to not really have control of our peas or anything else with that matter. And it allowed us to connect and start talking. So then we were start, started getting deep and talking about death and what we wanted to happen. My nana left the table. She didn't want to hear it. But we had a really deep chat. Beautiful. It was just after then that I said, Grandad, can I, I record you? Like, can I? listen to your stories and kind of record you on my phone Wonderful. yes Emily love so I did and his telling me stories and me asking and us connecting to, even over the stories I'd heard many many times before meant that when he did go when it was his time I was able to turn that into a cd and gift it to the family members oh, Wonderful. and that we all then got that part of granddad that no one else had dared to <laughs> venture into and we've all got that ability he lives that on he lives on doesn't he yes yeah, but so, to connect yes. to and allow that person to really celebrate the life and share the life with you in a different way and get to a different depth of what the truth is and the feelings in that moment and it's so beautiful you it's, know that, that sounds that's wonderful part of living consciously so we can die consciously that's part the, of the journey the great leveler of use of losing p control uh, united you and your grandfather and gave us that lasting legacy that's fantastic em thank you for that see this is what happens when you have a death cafe aka the departure lounge uh, here on the good morning portugal show fascinating conversation this morning love it cheers phil whoop, whoop um and verdad um to stephen from james there um i've had my funeral playlist sorted out for decades trick of the tale by genesis cathedral by crosby stills and nash uh fantastic i'm what about don't you want me baby i don't know maybe it's not inappropriate. Uh, we are destined to die one day which we have no experience of personally however i wonder therefore if we are destined to be born see there he goes again right hmm <laughs> Thank you, Garvo. Oh, yes. Very good, Stephen. Contact details. Website for M, please. M, how do we get in touch with you? Well, uh, if you're on Facebook, go on to Share and Care Portugal. Yep. Um, I haven't got a website. Uh, there's lots of transitions going on at the moment. You can get me through WhatsApp, um, Messenger and Telegram, and I'll sort something out with Carl so that he can put all the details onto wherever they need to be well yeah we get well, let's, we, we've got a, i'm developing is, a meet a meet the team kind of page for good morning portugal so you'll definitely be able to contact m through that if, if you haven't got anything else i'm very happy to take care of that for you em website got sh the website for sharing care got shut down um right. not long after she died and then okay. my website so i had four websites at that all shut down because there's been massive changes in life for me with share and care for everything yeah, um yeah. so it it required a whole new everything got that everything came to an end and everything's being reborn this is part of the rebirth of of good morning portugal it's part of the rebirth of share and care you know it's beautiful how the the journeys are running alongside in that way it's yeah. been a total rebirth for, for me you know uh, and me and my little buddy my fur fur, fur buddy here you know yes. it's nearly a year since since he came into my life so it's, it's really interesting how because death always brings about rebirth there's always so much grace and so much gifts hidden amongst that and we can tune into that if we if we allow it you know, and, and, the, and the mere detail of having a website for you will be something that we can just take in our stride as a community. We'll make sure that happens. That's not a problem. You've got more important things to do. So we're, we'll gladly Thank take you. care of that. Bring me sunshine. That's what Phil wants in his funeral playlist there. Don't go to a crematorium with all your jewelry on. It'll get sifted out. 
<laughs> my dad used to say that. Yeah, leave it with the family. Um, you don't want to be buried like an Egyptian with all your gear around you, do you? Um, and a few slaves. Um, don't do that. <laughs> It's inappropriate. Uh, preparing a will can be very helpful in preparing for one's eventual end of life in this body. So well, let's deal with that. You know, Daniel Ray's, of course, we, we've spoken to on The Breakfast Show. He he, he knows how to, um, certainly I can, can put you in touch with somebody who can create a will for you if he doesn't do it himself. And also the assignment to make sure your original will in your original country is observed in Portugal. That's an important thing. Can to I do. mention there about wills as well? Yeah. If you're wanting to move to Portugal, and you're wherever you are, then your will will still stand when you move to Portugal. So yes. make sure it's sorted before you get it. Yeah. If you're already here and you're a resident here, and then you go and get your will done in the UK, it will not stand. It will not stand if you get it done after the date that you're resident in this country. Oh. Um, so then you have to go through um, a notary, and you can go to your local notaries and get one written up. But very good. That's, that well, that's, that's you go. the important bit to over here. Once you're a resident here, if you've got no will in place, you can't just go anywhere else and get it done. You have to get it done in Portugal. Because you are a resident um, here and, yeah. and you're, you're bound by the law here. Very good. Thank you for that. And, and, a, and a thank you generally, I think, from uh, Simon and Fiona there. Uh, to an extent, do you not have to at least respect that as a predominantly Catholic country, burial is the traditional method? I just wonder if there is a possibility, where do we go from here? Live services and being able to see it online after. Have we missed something out there? Um, I, a I'm French not sure, but I think I've with. got an answer. Okay, go on. Yeah, carry on. Okay, so when we... When Debbie transitioned, I was able to put a funeral service on for those that didn't manage to come from yes. the UK. Carl, you were yeah. part of that. Yeah, indeed. Um, and, and it was broadcast to different countries and we did we were able to do the funeral service in that way. Yeah. So it is possible to have an online funeral service. It it's perfectly okay to do so. It just because it's the standard way of doing it, the Catholic way, doesn't mean you have to do that. If you choose to be cremated, you can have your service in the house of rest or chapel of rest, whatever you call it, and then the body will go to the, the crematorium where you can have another little service there. It doesn't have to be Catholic, you know. It, yeah. You don't need to have any of that. Um, if you do want that, then that is possible you can yes. have that traditional Catholic burial um, um, Portuguese way, but it, you don't have to have it. You have a choice. And there's so, a note here, isn't there, is that that is what happens with death often, is if you don't specify what you want to happen, you will go the way most other people go in the tradition of where you are, whether that be Portugal or somewhere else, right? Well, you assume that you're supposed to do it that way yeah and if you don't know you have a choice it's like with living and dying isn't it if we assume we don't have a choice we do what we're told yeah and then it's really uncomfortable and we don't have a choice and we don't know what's happening well when we we take our power back when we research this stuff when we talk about things when we face these things through death cafes and things like here in the departure lounge we're able to sit and talk we learn about our choices we learn how to honor ourselves while we're living before we pass we're, we're on a, able to honor those who do pass by knowing those choices by knowing where we can go what we can do and how we can do it mm -hmm. all those different bits of info which you'll get with through me and Carl and through Cher and Karen things, all these bits will help you. That's like a jigsaw as you explore, you know, this, this part of living and it will take you to a whole new, a new depth and a new adventure, you know? Well said, well said. Oh, this is, no, Phil's got to go. Have a great day, Phil. And good luck at the, at the poker table there. Um, yeah. This is wonderful. Thank you for that question, Pete. Um, Woohoo! I made it back before the end of the show. Nice one, T Duck. Um, exclaim! Ex oh, I think Sarah liked my um, little anecdote there. Um, by Randy uh, Mudderford Key. Great memories. It wasn't one of your condoms, was it? By Randy. Um, get back to the UK. I, oh, okay. So you're you're able to um, uh, do the well. I mean, the, the I think I've been to two or three funeral services via via zoom recently it is part of what happened isn't it in the pandemic time 
uh, that would that may have been, I guess, what you could call a, a blessing that you can actually take part in a way that you thought you wouldn't be able to. And it might have seemed a little bit inappropriate before, but uh, the pandemic and Zoom combos has made that kind of standard practice in many ways, isn't it? Uh, nice to see Em looking so well, says our friend Fiona Worrell here. She is blooming. Very interesting, interesting conversation too. Cheers, Fiona. Thanks for being here. Yeah. I don't want to be embalmed. Can you avoid this in Portugal? Practical question. Yes, absolutely. You don't get embalmed in Portugal right. because there's no point, really. Right. To get embalmed in Portugal, you have to pay extra. You have to actually really make a point of saying, I need to be embalmed or whatever to be flown off to wherever country, if that's what you want to do. But being embalmed isn't something that's necessary because you're, you're pretty much in and out. <laughs> you know? No messing yeah. about. Oh, yeah, that's, a, yeah. that's, a, that's a joke my um, my stepdad used to say to me, whose, whose funeral I watched on Zoom, actually, um, not so long ago. Um, but little boy arrives at school uh, and the teacher says, why are you late? Says, Sorry, miss. My dad got burnt this morning. And um, she said, oh, I hope it wasn't serious. And the, and the kid says, no, no, don't piss about the crematorium. <laughs> OK, we're having a lighthearted look at death and dying this morning. Clearly, um, I wasn't talking about a legal will, but a written message to say your goodbyes. This is more the living will sort of thing, isn't it? That you're talking about, M, that James is mentioning here and about how you want your death to be handled. Living will, directions. Living um, will. OK, and this if you're a resident here um, and you haven't made this before, you need to take it to a notary and have that. I mean, we can have conversations and and, and, and support people in doing this as well. Yeah, absolutely. Right. There's, okay. there's a place now. Uh, I'm not sure because um, I don't know how to type it out for you, but it's called the conversation project dot org. Okay. If you go to there, there's loads of free resources and little booklets that you can download um, and that will help you have the the, the talk uh, you can have the talk with me by all means or someone else that you love and trust and it will talk you through all your different things for your living will and your power of attorneys and things you need to talk about things you need the questions you need to ask yourself yes. now it's really it's part of the work you do as a doula so I I, I work as a, a death doula so I help birth people out of this from living to dying and what part of the work I had to do was to do all this and go through the book and answer the questions for myself and some of it really is it takes you to a whole new depth of being and self-understanding and it, it's really quite a challenge that shows you where your work lies in the first place and shows you where you really need to do your work wow. so as those questions come up if you download it and you're going through reach out you know even if you just want to sit and cry and that's cool you know I mean, we'll sit I mean, and it's... cry together if need be uh and we'll Thank we'll you. work through it Thank you, and that's so beautiful. And and we did talk last time, didn't we, about the possibility of a, a residential weekend, a retreat, you know, where people do get together and talk about these things. Maybe people who are who are solo here in Portugal as, as expats, foreigners, immigrants arriving here might might uh, find that weekend very useful to to make these arrangements with with supportive and and uh, similarly minded people. So we'll look at that. Uh, there's only so much you can do in this environment and it has its limitations, but I think we've made a cracking start this morning. Um and uh, we'll look at make, having a weekend perhaps a, a get together where we can celebrate life whilst talking about death. Um can you be plasticized asked Pete. I quite fancy being an ornament. No offense well, Pete. Yeah. You, you can. can. You right. can and there's, I think he's called Gunther von Hagen, and he's an amazing German artist. And I, oh, yes. I went to his exhibition, and he plasticizes the people and slices them up into the most interesting things. And it teaches, and it's all about teaching you about health and your body's health and what happens to your body in different states of health. And and he, he, he challenges you on many levels as well. So check check that that guy out on on the internet and you can donate your body to science and have it used maybe in that way you could, people leave the body to him specifically for him and his artwork so they yes, do, don't they? i have seen that exhibition it was on in sheffield when i lived there he's a frightening looking fella as well he looks like yeah if, if there was a, a movie like movie the undertaker or yes. something like a wrestling what, like a hundred year old <laughs> tom waits he looks like doesn't he quite quite the fella um so i think but i think pete's got himself down as a kind of life-size sex toy is what i'm thinking which you've got to be careful you give that to as a christmas present Pete. you better uh, stick in that in ashes and having it siliconed 
Oh, okay, there you go. Some free advice for you there, Pete. Um, <laughs> or a video message. What's that? The point is to look deeply at your world after you've gone. And that's what we that's what we can do here. That's what we might do at this weekend we're talking about. The point is to look deeply at your world after you've gone, the world that remains. Now, this is what you you brought up for me when you were talking about your granddad. Your your granddad's legacy, his personality remains, and the com and th that was made possible by the, the conversation you had by the sound of it. Not em. just that, it was the history. He was a yes. boss at Rolls Royce, and he talked about some of the state, the times of the changes through Woodford and and the different planes that he's worked on and stuff. And he his he what he shared just through like I didn't try and take it in any other way i just allowed him to be and to speak and i just loved it mm. and through those things you've i've managed to get pieces of history that no one would have seen i've got teachings like that i can take from that that it would have been impossible to to get other other and any other way so it's it's learning the legacies you can leave while you're still here but also yes. after someone's gone then honoring the legacies they've left behind but it's it's remembering that while we're alive honor that live yes. improve well, your so. quality of life now don't wait till someone dies to do it you know don't I'm wait till the last minute that's why we're going to do some stretching and, and make a juice in just a minute <laughs> <laughs> You gonna, do you want to stick around for that and the dad jokes? Yes. Okay, all right. A last comment then on this uh, from Gary. Thank you for being here, Em, this morning. This is fantastic. Looking forward to the next time we do the departure lounge and let's get that uh, retreat sorted out where people can talk. A uh, great conversation today about a very important part of life and it, it proves uh, that we can talk about death more comfortably. And thank you for being a part of making this happen, Gary, as well. And yeah. certainly to you, Em, um, for standing for this. You know, this is this is what you are in our lives uh, in our community here somebody who stands for that being a possibility and it happened it happened this morning so thank you so much really really appreciate you for that <laughs> ah yes feeling that and um some very by randy some very interesting and thought-provoking subjects today what about the geezer belly flopping into the plonk let's do that now shall we by way of a palate cleanse now there are things you can put in your mouth for a palate cleanse Here's another way of doing it, uh, folks. <laughs> now, would you drink that wine after it got made, Em? No. You see, when you, when you realise that people pee in pools, they may not draw the line there at the uh, grape harvest. Let's just see that one more. <laughs> 